Okay, it's one o'clock. We can start this meeting now if everyone's ready. Just call this meeting to order and uh, indicate a declaration of con conflict if any committee members want to declare that on the meeting agenda items. Look to the committee members. I have an agenda in front of us with three delegations. Looking for a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. Councillor Seegers, Councillor Lutz, all in favor? Thank you. We have three delegations presenting today. David Garrow, Shaw, it says here on my notes, so I'm assuming there's a first or last name there. And Wanda Kay, I hope I have that presented right and uh, spoken right to you. We'll start then with Mr. Garrow to step up first to the mic in front of us. And if you want to push the button, I'll activate it, Mr. Garrow. Welcome. Jero. Okay, close. I'll um, no problem. I'll make a note here, phonetic note, so I do that properly. Thanks. Yeah, I will. Our after I mark it down. Works and Environment Committee. Good afternoon. My name is David Jero. My wife and I reside at 6349 Bailey Road in the Seashell. We moved into our newly constructed retirement house just over a year ago from the rapidly and densely growing area known as Central City in Surrey. Here's four of the many reasons for our move to West Seashell. Smaller and much friendlier community atmosphere, fresher and healthier environment, and I would like you to pay attention to the following last two reasons, less traffic and quieter and safer neighborhood. It is to these last two reasons that I, along with our many good neighbors in the Bailey Road area, wish to address regarding the District of Seashell's consideration to remove the bullards on Bailey Road. The Tyler Heights development apparently originally was turned down as Bailey Road was constructed as a neighborhood road and was not suitable to safely carry the extra traffic volume that would be generated from the Tyler Heights development. Property owners in Oracle Heights, Bailey Road areas made a concession to help the developer of Tyler Heights by allowing bollards to be installed near the top of Bailey Road at Maxi Lane in order for the Tyler Heights development to proceed. The bollards were installed as a condition of the land use contract between the District of Seashell, the OCP official community plan, and the developer of Tyler Heights, and as a condition of rezoning the land for the developer. Permanently removing the bollards on Bailey Road will contravene this final land use contract. The developers for Tyler Heights, through a traffic study, recognized that Nickerson Road would be the more suitable arterial road to a route, I should say, to Northwest Bay Road and then to Highway 101. Later on, it was determined that some of these steel bollards spanning across the top of Bailey Road should be replaced with flexible bollards so that emergency vehicles can pass through for emergency purposes. This was obviously a very good and logical idea in the interest of public safety, and so it was done. Further to that good decision, however, there should have been the installation on either side of those bollards stating emergency vehicle access only. So it is clear to the public not to drive over these flexible bollards and also to make it clear to emergency vehicles approaching the bollards that they can pass through. Emergency services personnel should actually be aware of that in any event. Permanently removing the bollards on Bailey Road could create public safety issues and accident situations. Bailey Road is a very long and narrow road that has several curvatures running down a very, very steep grade. Bailey Road is much narrower than most normal arterial routes, whereby two vehicles can be parked on either side of the road, and yet two moving and oncoming vehicles can still easily pass in between. On Bailey Road, the only, movie, only one moving vehicle can narrowly pass between two parked vehicles. This renders Bailey Road permanently unsuitable as a major arterial route, particularly since there will even be more traffic flow from the soon-to-be-developed third phase of Tyler Heights, 15 houses and a duplex with 17 units in total, and a house being constructed at the east end of Tyler Road. Bailey Road will not be able to safely handle the increased traffic generated by these projects coupled with future residential development projects that will unfold on the north side of Tyler Road between Andres Road and all the way past Bailey Road. Page Road is also to be extended north to Tyler which will create another arterial route. 
This third attempt, following two other attempts over the past few years, by a minority of individuals to eliminate the bollards on Bailey Road should therefore be quashed and the bollards should remain now and forever. Those persons that either had a house constructed or purchased a house above the bollards on the north side knew very well that the bollards were there already. This ongoing conflict created by a minority of individuals must stop and we should all recognize and respect the contracts and agreements that included the Bailey Road bollards to be permanently installed. The recently completed and submitted petition with 69 signatures that was submitted this February by the residents of Bailey Road and the residents of its shorter connecting roads clearly speaks to the district, that's district of Seashelt, pardon me, that the bollards on Bailey Road must be retained and to have this matter concluded now and forever. Tyler Heights development was originally to be all strata, including bare land strata lots that included the lots above the bollards along the top of Bailey Road. I've got a site plan here that shows that it's on the website there. Uh, this formed the land use agreement to which the residents of Oracle Heights had agreed to have Tyler Heights strata development proceed with the bare land strata lots on Upper Bailey Road segreg segregated by the bollards. Apparently, over the recent years, the District of Seashell has allowed the Tyler Heights developer to convert or rezone the bare land strata lots above the bollards, but on Bailey Road to freehold lots without any consultation with or consideration of the residents of Oracle Heights. How did this happen and who is responsible for this? This change to the bare land strata lots on the north end of Bailey Road contravened the original land use agreement plan and since then seems to be much of the basis for a smaller group of persons wanting to remove the bollards from Bailey Road. The majority of the people living in the Oracle Heights development below these bollards do not want the bollards removed so that Oracle Heights can remain as a distinct freehold higher end residential neighborhood and not turn Bailey Road into a main arterial route simply to satisfy a few persons in the northeast end of the Tyler Heights strata development. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Giro. So we next have, coming up to speak, is Jennifer Shaw. Good afternoon. My name is Jenny Shore, and I live at 5633 Andrus Road, and the removal of the bollards on Apollo would greatly impact me and my neighborhood. Currently, we have a quiet neighborhood limited to those who live there and our guests. I'm very concerned about the wear and tear on our roads, which we have to maintain at our cost. Not only that, we have to take care of the snow removal. These costs could cause our strata fees to increase, in addition to the taxes that we pay. Our road is narrow. There was a variant sort in order to fit more houses. And if you think Bailey is narrow, come and see Andres and Peters and Apollo. Not a, uh, when, on occasions when there are visitors, like Christmas, Easter, Mother's Day, kids and grandkids are all getting out of cars Having cars parked either side of the road and traffic trying to come through, there's certain to be an accident eventually. It can be really hazardous. Having cars travel through is just a lethal situation. It's also highly improbable that cars will adhere to our 30 kilometer speed limit, making it really perilous for anyone walking there. There are no sidewalks. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. And I think the next and final speaker on the Bollard issue is Wanda Kay. It is. <clears throat> so, Honorable Chair, and council members that are here with the committee and staff of District of Seashelt. My name is Wanda Kay, and I have been authorized to speak on behalf of Strata Plan BCS3393 and for four homes on Apollo East. I live at 6250 Apollo Road, Seashelt. 
I must believe that this committee and the District of Seashell does care about what the residents think. Proof in point is the District of Seashelt and this committee, I believe, uh, went ahead and spent the money to have a consulting firm to send out an extensive 11-page survey to 1,500 residents with a map included, all in color, with a, uh, uh, an envelope with a postage to be sent back. It must have cost quite a bit. So the committee obviously does care about what people think. This survey was asking residents input on present and future planning for trails, parks, outdoor, outdoor uh, facilities. The survey asked, by how much would you be in favor of raising your individual taxes? It was inadvertent that I found out about the possibility of the removal of the bullards. That meant that there would have been no public consultation. I would like to acknowledge the residents in attendance today behind me. <clears throat> Typically, to calculate how many people are interested in one subject, governing bodies will take a number of residents who take the time to attend a meeting and calculate one person present for every 10 who did not attend. This gathering today should be an indication to each and, one, each and every one of you on the committee how passionate the subject of the Bullards is. The residents affected would not have had the opportunity to get on the delegation to be able to speak or have supporting documents submitted for this meeting. And they would not have had the chance to set the record straight about the lengthy history of agreements between Oracle Heights and other residents in the area Tyler Heights Strata, Andrea Properties Limited, and the District of Seashelt. The Bullards were placed in the roadway, the Bullards were never placed in the roadway merely for a temporary solution during the construction of Tyler Heights Strata. At one point, the District of Seashelt turned down the application to construct the Tyler Heights Strata. This was due to a traffic study done when an estimated 560 vehicle movements on a daily basis would be added to the neighborhood roads of Apollo and Bailey. The traffic study also concluded the roads were not able to handle the increased traffic. After hearing the Tyler Heights strata was turned down, the residents of Oracle Heights and other residents affected by Bailey and Apollo traffic, they stepped up to the plate and they worked out a compromise that the metal bullards would be placed to solve the problem. The compromise paved the way for the District of Seashelt to grant the application for Tyler Heights to be built. Years later, when the subject of the emergency vehicle access came up in good faith, the residents said they would compromise again to let flexible bullards be placed. A vote was taken by council, the subject was closed. It was significant to note that the bullards and the turf stones were a precondition of the OCP amendment permitting the rezoning of Tyler Heights and its development permit. Copies of this report to council by the development planner evidencing this form part of the submission. Tyler Heights has been pretty much built out as was anticipated from the onset. The Bullards were performing as indicated by all stakeholders. What we did not get was a sign saying emergency vehicle access only. My property, Apollo 11, sits right on the border of Tyler Heights Strata. I have a 3.71 meter MRA easement on my property, primarily for a swale water drainage. On February 16, 2018, both Martin from the West Seashell Community Association and I met with Mark in the planning department of the District of Seashell. Mark showed us a survey plan which was done well before Tyler Heights was built. I think you have a copy of it I sent. It's right here. Mark told us a survey point of reference for the MRA is the corner of my foundation to the west, 3.71 meters. Using a proper measuring tape that measures in meters and cross-reference three different ways to conclude the same. 
There is photographs here of two ways that I um, did measure. I think you all have copies of this that were e-filed to you. Uh, but we did take it three different ways. <clears throat> the bollards are two feet outside the MRA and on Tyler Heights property. I was present when the rock wall was placed to build up the land on lot S41 in Tyler Heights strata. I remember seeing the laser survey being done that spray paint on the ground marking the boundary. The heavy equipment operator told me, quote, they have decided to place a rock wall well out away from the MRA, which resulted in more grassland for me. It is no coincidence that the Apollo Road pavement ends at the same X marks the spot that we came to. <clears throat> Since the bullards are not just a few inches within the Tyler Heights strata, but two feet, we are confident of our findings. If the district feel, still feels the bullards are, the, are on their MRA, an independent survey must be done. The, bull, the bullards which link Apollo, Peters Crescent, and Andres create a loop, a complete loop, and have a specific focus, creating a private road for strata homes and their guests. Please see photographs for reference. Again, showing the photograph of 30 zone, a private sign, how narrow the streets are, and also a chain across a road in Cascade Crescent strata. A sign within the strata road states the fact. When the district gave permission for the loop road to be narrow and have no sidewalks, they effectively agreed this is a private road for their use only and not meant for through traffic. Even now, it is difficult backing out of driveways, and one house on Apollo East, right across the street from me, needs to back up a steep incline to exit their driveway. The district will not maintain the road surface or base in the Tyler Heights strata. So should not considering opening Apollo up to through traffic and leave the increased wear and tear financial burden to the strata. No municipal um, snow removal equipment needs to enter the loop because the strata provides its own. I have submitted a petition with 100% of the homes in, three, in the three loop road of Apollo, Peters, and Andres. <clears throat> Absent are three homes whose residents are out of the country and could not be contacted. Neighbors that know these three households are confident if they had been home, they would have signed. Even one household in the, uh, out, that was out of the country at the time that I had this done sent an email giving permission for their two names to be added. They happen to be back from their trip and are here today. So if you need them to sign it, they probably would do that. I cannot stress enough how rare and almost impossible it is to have 100% results on any petition. The petition header read as follows. We here, the undersigned, are strongly opposed to the removal of the bullards on Apollo Road and West Seashell, Tyler Heights Strata, creating created and wants to maintain a private entrance and exit. Within the boundaries of Tyler Heights Strata, three roads make up a loop, Andres, Peters, and Apollo, and create a quiet, desired community plan for. Most importantly, these three roads are very narrow with no sidewalks and were never designed to handle through traffic. These three roads have become a popular, highly used pedestrian walk. Pedestrians need to walk on the roadway and well into it. If there's any parked cars, they have to walk all the way around them. Removing the bullards will increase the volume of traffic and jeopardize pedestrian safety and the safety of residents backing out of driveways. An important part of the decision to move to this location was that the bullards were in place, creating the community we want to live in. <clears throat> the emergency fire and ambulance vehicles have been witnessed passing between the two metal bullards on Apollo and over the flexible bullards with ease. The metal bullards are only held on with a metal clip, just like the ones used in dolly handles, and can be easily removed if need be. The fastest, most direct route for the fire truck or ambulance is up Nickerson, a major arterial road 
down Kevin's and on to Andre's. Using an automator reading on my vehicle from the bottom of Norwest Bay Road up to entering Andre's, the reading is 1.4 K. The same reading from Norwest Bay Road to the Bullards on Apollo is 1.1. Speaking to a retired, recently retired police officer, he said the response time is negligible. The chain on the side road of Cascade Crescent Heights, which is in this lower photograph here, um, shows the thought process by the district to restrict access and emergency services negotiated the chain like they negotiated the Bullards now. Over the years, I have noticed the Bullards on Apollo see little or no maintenance by the district. And a close examination showed the corroded and frayed metal wires, which has now led to one of the Bullard's demise. I just received a letter when I walked in here from the Seashell Fire Department, dated July 4, 2017, signed by Trevor Pike. In here, it basically says that they do not support blocking of public roadways in any way, period. Strata road is not a public road. It also goes on to say um, in great length here uh, that they basically don't want anything blocking the road. Flexible bull ro bullards are not blocking the road. A cement concrete divider, a chain, or anything else would. Now, if you want to make a comparison, on, in the lower mainland, there are strata complexes, and they have actual, literally, gates, metal gates. And you can't get in without a code or a key, and the fire department has those keys. In almost all cases, they have a small laneway or alley, and there are flexible bullards on that. In closing, these are not simply bullards in the roadway. They have become the heart and the soul of a quiet community. It is an intricate part of why we chose to live there. The council has voted many times to keep the Bullards in place on Apollo Road because they see why they are supposed to be there in the first place. If Apollo is meant to be a through road, again, why did the district agree to the narrowness and no sidewalks? In March 2015, Mayor Milne said, and I am paraphrasing, the residents have spoken. This is a community they want to live in. This is a governance issue. The residents in the past negotiated in good faith with the district to have the Bullards in place. So we would ask you to uphold that agreement and the OCP. Paramount is neighborhood and pedestrian safety and the well-being of people that call this place home. Respectfully submitted Wanda K on behalf of Strata Plan BC S3393 and the, the four homes on Apollo East. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank, thank you, Wanda, for speaking uh, to that issue and the other presenters that spoke to the issue before us. I would ask the committee, although the members who have spoken have sat down, if the committee has any questions of the individuals that presented, I'm sure they could come up and answer those questions if needed. I'm looking around at the committee. I'm sure your presentations were quite clear to these committee members and understandable, so they have no questions. We'll then move on to the correspondence connected to this issue. 4-1 and 4-2. How would the committee like to proceed with those two pieces of correspondence? The first one is the letter referred to from uh, Chief Pike. Move receipt. Receipt. Second, Councillor Wright, all in favor of receipt of 4-1. All in favor, thank you. So the committee has seen that letter and read it. 4-2. This is a letter from the West Seashelt Association, first and second. 
All in favor, receipt. Thank you. Any questions on those letters that were presented? Once again, fairly clear. And I believe the president of the association is sitting right in front of me if there's any questions of the work that they've done on this issue and the information they've been gathering. So the committee knows that Martin is here in front of us. Okay, then, if we don't have any questions on those and we've seen the letters and read them as a committee, then let's move into 5.1. And the item that's before us today in reference to the many people that are here will be on the agenda very shortly, just so you know, as you've probably looked at the agenda. Let's move then to 5.1, the minutes of the previous meeting. We've received Councillor Lutz, Councillor Seegers, receipt, all in favor. Any business arising from those minutes? Okay, seeing none, then let's move on to 7.1. There's a report from the Director of Engineering and Operations dated February 14th. Thank you. A receipt. Councillor Lutz, seconder. All in favor of receipt of that information. Thank you. Any questions on the activity report from committee members? Councillor Seegers. Thank you. Page 34. Under engineering. Uh, one, two, three, fourth line down where it talks about the stage two liquid waste management plan update. You said proposals have been received and are under review. Do we have an idea when we're going to be able to award this or do we have any other information? Uh, at this point, I cannot say the exact date, but uh, we are reviewing this two. Uh, we have re received only two RFPs. We are, we are working with the consultant to, to determine uh, which uh, consultant is preferred for, or for the contract. Okay, and I have one more at the bottom of that. It talks about the Groundwater Task Force hosted by the SCRD. Can you just give us a little more information on that? Yes, two of our staff have uh, attended uh, meetings at the SCRD to just review and how things are proceeding with what their ideas are on, on the d different supplies. Uh, we are just basically observers. We don't really comment too much. We just kind of acknowledge it, and then that information is brought brought back. There's going to be follow-up meetings, and hopefully there'll be more substance to those meetings as, as time goes on. Yeah, and I think that the committee knows, and Councillor Seegers knows, and uh, committee members who have been at the regional district know that there's one groundwater well identified with not a lot of volume that will most likely still need a treatment plan to go with it. So. Those are some of the considerations that our council and this committee needs to deal with going forward regarding alternative sources of water. Thanks for that information to staff, from staff to council. Any other questions on the report? Oh, yeah. Additional information on that one then? Uh, yes, uh, we yeah. will provide uh, committee updates, uh, next committee meeting, okay. uh, what we discuss and what are the outcomes with the three meetings we had uh, with the with SERD. So we'll bring that uh, report to the next com com committee meeting. On, on the groundwater? Yes. Okay, thank you. I look forward to that. I think that it's, as I said, it's a low volume and it probably needs treatment, so it'll be interesting to see that report. Thanks for taking part in those, Sunet. Any other information and or questions that the committee would like? Councillor Seegers. Under the Water Resource Centre, uh, page 35, it indicates at the top that the Odor control system chemical pumps were brought online at the Water Resource Center. So I'm wondering when they were taken offline. Yes, they were taken offline before I started with the district. And uh, it was seen that the odor was greatly reduced just by using the carbon um, filtration system. So now they've been brought back online. Yes, except for one pump, we're waiting for a motor because there's some electrical issue with the motor. Okay, and then two lines down it says order, ordered new carbon for odor control system at the Water Resource Center. So if they were offline, you know, why do we need new carbon? Is the, the carbon wasn't being used? Do we need to replace it? If so, what's the cost and how do we dispose of the old carbon? Uh, the new carbon has just arrived. And uh, when you start to smell odor, that's when you have to replace the carbon, which is the last stage in the odor control system. Uh, it was flooded with uh, raw sewage at one point during commissioning, so the carbon was fouled at that time. And we are replacing it now. Okay, and how do we dispose of the old carbon? 
The old carbon can go to the landfill because carbon is uh, just like coal. Um, it's organic, and uh, so we'll be putting it in the landfill. Okay. Thank you very much. That's all your, you got. It seems like you got good answers, so that's helpful. Thank you for the answers. Thank you. Any other questions on the reports presented? Seeing none, Councillor Shanks, you're fine. Okay. You're way, you're way over there, so yeah, he's listening. Okay, great. Okay, then let's move on to 7.2, Risk Management Services Assessment Report. Thank you. Councillor Lutz seconding. All in favor of receipt of the information. Mr. Kootenay, did you want to speak to this? Yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, again, each year, uh, MIA, our Municipal Insurance Association, provides us a consultation, and we have a person that comes out through risk management to, to review issues that, that we bring forward. Uh, several of the issues, again, as the report states, are operational, and, and they're being you know, taken care of by the, the appropriate divisions, uh, engineering or, or operations. Uh, other areas of concern were, again, the walkway along Davis Bay, as well as the, the structure that's uh, on Davis Bay walkway, and that's being addressed, and, and we're going to be following up with, uh, with the uh, district, uh, I'm sorry, the highways department to see if we can find some solution on, on issues regarding the, the risk on, on that. Also, the, but the ballers were brought forward at this time, and that's why they're bringing back to, to council, because they were addressed at the... At, in the MIA report uh, regarding the, the issue on the ballers. Okay, I'm going to leave Mr. Kootenay's mic on for a second. If committee members have any questions of him, there was quite a extensive report that came with this. Obviously, there, the issue is in front of us, and there's been a number of presentations asking us to keep those. Councillor Seegers. Thank you. Uh, the material that's presented by staff in the report and from the community indicates that the bollards on Apollo are on private property. They're on the strata. Um, as well, the, the road is not maintained by the district. And we do not do snow removal or anything up in that area. Is that all correct? That, that is correct. Yeah, we went out and we did a, didn't do a legal survey, but a, they're very close. They're kind of on property line. but probably more with it within the strata. That's correct. We do not do snow removal. Again, it's a strata property. So MIA indicated that, according to them, um, there is a risk to the district. What would be the risk to the district, given that they, we don't own them? Uh, again, it would be access you know, into that development by emergency vehicles. Anything like that it would be a concern to them. OK. Okay. I mean, they, the chief did speak to it, and uh, I mean, they do use the fire service, so there's that part to it, and the and the ambulance service. Councillor Wright? So uh, these bollards are flexible? That's correct, yes. Well, I'm having a hard time understanding if they're flexible bollards. Why would any emergency vehicle have any difficulty with them? And if they're not on our land, why would we even be concerned about them? And, and again, that's, that's a recommendation to staff that the bollards on Apollo be retained, and uh, not retained, but left as is, and, and taken upon the responsibility okay. of the strata to maintain. Indeed. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Mr. Kootenay, for speaking to this and presenting the issues. And as it is in front of us, we do have some choices we can make as a committee based on the citizen input and uh, the indication from staff that it might most likely is within the strata territory. Any other questions of the report in front of us? Councillor Lutz? <coughs> so the bollards on Bailey Road do belong to the district? That's correct, yes. And the ones on Apollo could belong to the strata if they're willing to accept the ownership? That's correct. I'll move that the bollards on Apollo Road remain if the strata is willing to accept ownership of them. Second. Any discussion from committee members? Councillor Seegers. Thank you. I think they do own them. Do they not? I'm not sure the ownership, uh, perhaps Sanath has more background information on that. Okay, so we need to clarify 
the information around who owns them right now. It sounds like the Strata is willing to take ownership of them and they're maintaining the road. It sounds like they actually own them already, but that we may not have anything in writing indicating that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the part of the subdivision and rezoning application um, uh, is a condition that uh, to install this bollard, um, but, and the developer installed the bollards, uh, but this time I don't know it's on private property or the district property. So we have to figure out with the legal survey to determine uh, the location of the bollards. Okay. Okay, so the motion that's in existence probably makes sense once it's determined. I guess committee has to then decide if it comes back or have an additional motion to deal with it if in fact it comes back to determine that's not on the property. But we have been hearing that it is from those that are doing the work and even staff who's indicated it most likely is. We just have to make sure that uh, there's a transference of the bollards and the liability in a sense. Councillor Wright and then I guess Councillor Seegers. Uh, I'll, I'll pass on it. Okay. You know, you, you, we're going to come back to you then? Okay, we'll come back to you. Sure. Councillor Se Okay, Councillor Wright, it's back to you. Councillor Seegers, pass back have, to you. Have you had any discussion with the Strata property um, regarding the Apollo Road ball, uh, bollards to see if they're willing to accept the ownership of them? Or is that... No, no we haven't. Uh, basically, this is brought forward because of the MI report. But with the indication and the, and the uh, concerns that we've had, I would assume that they would want to take those over. Well, I guess the, the, I seconded the motion because I, I wanted it on the table for discussion, but I guess I have difficulty arbitrarily transferring the ownership to a strata that doesn't, hasn't been consulted about it. Um, so I'm not sure how we get around that. I, I don't want to see the bollards removed on Apollo Road, so I'm willing to do that. Um, I guess um, before I can vote for this motion, a vote in favor, we have to have that discussion with, uh, with the ownership, about the ownership with the strata to determine if in fact they're willing to accept that. I mean, if, if we pass this motion and they say, no, we're not willing to accept it, then what do we do? So I would like to get, I would like to not put the cart before the horse, I'd like to get it in sequence so that when we do it, we do it correctly and we don't have to come back to it. Thank you. I think we have an assumption that we could make based on the presentations of the people speaking that there's some interest in retaining those bollards and how that will be done. Could you please read back the motion that was presented and seconded, please? So if the strata accepts ownership of them. Okay, great. Councillor Seegers. Thank you. Uh, question to staff. By passing this motion, it sounds like what you'll be doing is going out and doing a survey to make sure that yes, they are on the strata property and then have conversations with the strata with regarding ownership, whether or not they'll take those on. If not, it would come back to us indicating that either way, it's not it's not either on, not on their property or they won't accept ownership and then it'll have to come back for a further decision. Yes. Okay, I think we know what we need to do. Thank you, that is true that the, uh, it will just come back to us and the bollards will stay while we figure this out and that's what many of the people here are speaking in favor of. So it's probably a good, a good uh, decision that we're making in terms of figuring all those things out. Councillor Lutz. Thank you. And living in the strata, I realize the people in this room will have to have a meeting and make that decision. No one person here would be allowed to do that. So it will take a bit of time, but I think that the way the motion reads, it protects both us and the strata until they are willing to accept the ownership. Okay, we've had a thorough discussion to talk to staff to make sure that we're crossing the T's and dotting the I's. The motion's in front of us, all in favor. Thank you, committee, for making that decision. We're, uh, we haven't got there yet. Yeah, yeah. There was an, there's one motion on one issue, so, uh, and there's another motion sitting there. Councillor Wright. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move um, that motion uh, that the Bailey Road uh, bollards be removed. I want it noted that I'm going to move it because we need to discuss it and we need to have a decision about it. 
So if there's a seconder that puts it on the table, then we can have the discussion. Okay, Councillor Seegers. Okay, so it's on the table now. I mean, we could have, I, mean, I think Councillor Wrights wants to discuss it. We could have just not moved it and then let it sit and not, not happen, but you want to have a public discussion, so we'll do that. Any discussion on this particular motion put forward? Councillor Wright. I don't see any other lights. Mr. Chair, I'd call a question. Okay. I'm calling call the question then. Did you want to speak to it? or? Yeah, call yeah. It, yeah. Calling the question, yep. Okay. So I'll just. Uh, vote on whether or not the question should be called. Or if there should be further discussion. So I vote. Okay, I'll call the question. All in favor? I'm removing them. Opposed? Okay. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Did, did everyone understand what just happened? So they won't be removed. It was put on the table by Councillor Wright for a discussion, and then he moved the vote to put it forward, and the vote was defeated to have the bollards on Bailey removed. Yes. Yeah. Goes to council as the motion that was defeated, uh, the, but there was a vote that was had, and uh, I just want to want to make sure if that does go to council as a defeated motion. Uh, but um, I, I think it's clear to everyone what happened, though, was a two to one vote, and it could be pulled from the minutes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There's no Yeah, it's, uh, there's no removal, so. No, no, the motion was to keep them. Yeah. No, the motion was to have them removed, and it was a defeated motion. Yes. So I would appreciate the motion to have them remain. Well, no, that's what that means. If the motion to remove was defeated, that means they remain. Okay, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, it's pretty, yeah. It's a yes or a no. Uh, would go to, I'm assuming, the next council meeting if the minutes are prepared. Yeah. So just uh, if you're if if you're asking this group and and what will happen is after we've spoken to this and I'll just really quickly end it, then I'll give you some time if everybody's here for that item if they want to leave, but it will come to the next council meeting if that's what you need to know to be here then, and that should be when is that? in I think the first first Wednesday in Mar in March so Next the 6th 7th is it the 7th okay Wednesday the 7th just to get it clear to you yeah <laughs> well we'll see we'll see that's a good that's good advice that this this committee can hear is hearing from you you want a permanency although I don't know how many things are permanent in life but uh, but we'll see <laughs> And it is the seventh. Like Councilor Shanks, did you want to add something to the before we? I just let everyone know that we're. Yes, uh, yeah. the audience probably wonders why I've been sitting quietly uh, through this uh, committee meeting. I'm not a member of this specific committee. I'm an observer, basically. Um, we have various other committees, and uh, this particular committee, I am have no voice. I can give my opinion, but I have no voice. No so it's interesting to see how this particular decision has gone. And when it comes to a full committee meeting or full regular council meeting, where all, all seven of us are in fact here, I will have some comments to make because the, the presentations made to us uh, this afternoon, um, I feel are inaccurate um, because I was one of the few people that was at the meeting where this was, in fact, to be a temporary measure on, on Bailey. So, so I look forward to that discussion next week. Thank yes. you. And uh, Councillor Shanks, you can talk to him after the meeting. Those that uh, may disagree with his position, he's very approachable. So 
just to let everyone know that item is now done. If people would like to leave, I'll give you a couple minutes and uh, then we'll proceed with the rest of the item. Items on the agenda, if you want to stay and enjoy the rest of the items, that's up to you. I just want to be clear. Can I ask a question? Are you, really quickly, yes. Yeah. Um, so the Bullard's on a call. Yeah. We'll stay if the strata says that they yeah. will take possession of them. Correct. Ownership. Yeah, ownership and possession, yeah. Yeah. They are legally on their property. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. The okay. Okay. It's just, just it's, it'll be a discussion of ownership, liability, etc. Yeah. It'll come to your strata, and I'm sure you're going to be an advocate for their retention. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're about to continue on with the meeting agenda items. Okay, let's go into 7.3, District of Seashell Operations Center Mechanical and Electrical Report. I'll move for receipt. Thank you. Second, all in favor of receipt of the information presented. Thank you. We have a number two motion there. Okay. Recommendation two. Okay. One and two. First and second, Councillor Lutz. Councillor Wright, Councillor Seegers will speak to this particular motion in front of us, and I believe the, a couple of representatives from the Solar Association are here as well. Councillor Seegers. Yes. I know when this was brought, or revert, referred back to staff, there was a request that the information on the performance of the solar panels at the Water Resource Centre be provided, because they're a real life example that we have on hand. I don't see that information presented. Um, also, as uh, Councillor Inkster indicated, the um, solar panel group is actually questioning some of the numbers that are in the report. So I refer all that to staff and I'd like some feedback. Yeah, I was just trying to make sure the motion was lined up. Uh, Mr. Cooney. That's, that's correct. We are trying to uh, obtain the information regarding the solar panels at the WRC. We do have a website that we can gain access to. However, we're trying to get a login to even go further. When, we, when I did the review, the, the payback is, is quite excessive. It's in the 60-year period for that. That's just my calculations at this point. It was between 63 to 85 years for, for the payback on, the, on those, that installation. But I'm trying to get in a little deeper in, into that information. Councillor Seegers. And the information that's brought forward by the, you may not have seen the letter. The letter just came in this morning from the, um, how do they call themselves? Sunshine Coast Community Solar Association. No, I, ha I haven't seen that. Uh, however, again, the, the report, is, as mentioned when I started going through it more in depth, they are using facts uh, regarding the, the cost per kilowatt hour based on 56 years. They haven't put an escalator. So that might bring the, the payback down to maybe 30 or 35 years, depending on what that escalator is. Right. They're also talking about the fact that the cost of installation that the consultant has put in are much higher compared to other local installations that have happened, particularly Davis Bay Elementary School and Pender School. 
So given that those costs are less than two thirds, it looks like, that could also impact this. That, that could as well. I think, I think that would probably bring it down maybe the 20, 25 year period for, for the payback if you take the installation mm -hmm. down. Uh, I, again, we could install the, the solar panels. However, we were instructed to make sure that we bring this cost of the building down as low as we can to, to ensure that it gets constructed. We are going to be putting up the conduits and maybe review the solar panels next year or, or in a future date. But we are definitely planning for the, the installation of, of solar. But again, not at this time because we want to keep the cost down. Okay, I, think, I still think we need to do a little bit more work on this information. Okay, we have a motion in front of us. Any other any other thoughts? Looking around at the uh, committee members. I mean, th this figure that was presented surprised me as well. So uh, I, I'm glad that Mr. Kootenay's decided to put the conduit in, and in a number of years, maybe in the next couple of years, maybe hydro rates will start to move upward, as has been predicted, and we can look at this. But um, you know, Davis Bay Elementary put in some put in some solar panels uh, that I think I sent pictures to council of a number of months ago on the roof. And I, I mean, I, if they didn't receive them, I can take pictures again and show them. And the case study is presented here anyway. So, and they, they I think they got the money from the community forest. So, I mean, maybe we should ask the community forest for money. Yeah, but I think it was solar panels, solar specific. Yeah, but a lot of it's connected to the greenhouse, though. A lot of, if you look at where the panels are, yeah, yeah, because of the the energy usage and things like that. So very connected. So, that, and I think that case study's in here. So I think I'm glad the conduit's in the place, and that's maybe where we should start. We should start looking maybe in future very soon as to where we're maybe going to get some money outside of our budget to do something that I think is sustainable and and smart going forward. So, we have a motion in front of us. Uh, and this will come back, and I'll keep talking about it. The motion's been first and seconded. All in favor? Pardon me? Okay. So the motion is passed, and you'd like to make, make a new motion, Councillor Seekers? Thank you. Um, I'd like it diarized that on completion of the building that we revisit this. Thank you. Seconder for that motion? Second, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Great, okay, good, that will come back and, uh, and I'll certainly be looking for cheaper solar power provision and supplies over the next number of years as well. Thanks Mr. Kootenay for all your work on that. Okay, then let's move on to 7.4. Okay, all in favor of receipt, great. Any questions on this tentative schedule? This is a schedule most likely for us, but for the public to know when that construction on Trail Avenue will occur. Councillor Seegers. Thank you. What will the communication plan be around this? So that, have we put a communication plan together? Maybe that's the question. Do we have a communication plan put together around this schedule? so that the community will be informed and can give us input when we are looking for it and know when things are going to be happening. Thank you. Uh, as you can see that uh, the 50 percent design and the public consultation, so by that time the, com uh, uh, the communication strategy we will discuss with the, the, the impacted property owners and the basically uh, basically, what we are doing here, the communication mean for the public, uh, the the construction schedule. That's what you're asking. Thank you. Yeah, we have a communications manager that we've hired. So what I'm suggesting, I guess, is that we work with our communications manager and put the plan together around this to get the community involved and informed. Thank you. I'll look. I'll be watching for that as this comes forward. Mr. Kootenay. Okay, thanks. Uh, indeed, we are definitely going to go out to the public. There's going to be a lot of information going out to the public. Again, disruptions as we move forward, and we will be working with our communications manager to get that word out. Again, it's a beautiful project, and, and we're quite excited about it. So. 
Indeed. Okay. So public that's here that's interested in that project know that there will be information coming out from the District of Seashelt on this project and many of its components in the next number of months. Any other questions on the agenda item? It's been received. Questions have been asked. Thank you, Councillor Seegers, for clarification on the communication piece of that. We'll now move on to adjournment seven. Sec first. Adjournment, Councillor Seeger second, Councillor Lutz, all in favor of adjournment, thank you. Thanks all to coming. Any questions in the audience? Mr. Pauly. If I can make a question, I could have added 